<sighs> One more time. Hello, everyone. Who is here straight away? Who is watching the VOD? This will be a very interesting live stream. It's been a good while since I uh, last did one. Couple of weeks, yeah, yeah, not not bad, could be worse. Mm -hmm. Gerald the Diesel Engine, hello, thank you very much for tuning in. You're here straight away. Live streams. Union Pacific fan, hello. Thank you very much for tuning in as well. How are you doing? Getting on with the pre stream preparations, so I will be with you in just a moment. Finally back, yes, of course. Good to have you back. And good for me to be back as well. Can you try uh, make a Lego? Uh, I don't know what a Lego R is. So, um. <laughs> But um, no, I'm not going to be building any Lego for this live stream. This is going to be a standard sit down and chat live stream because there is quite a bit to talk about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking of what character. Well, if you're about to say a Thomas character, then you haven't watched my latest video, which went out about five hours ago. It premiered as well, which is pretty fun. I meant after this. Um, I'm not well. That's something I'm going to be talking about later in this live stream, of course. Time for the Discord ping at everyone. Live uh, now. Two hundred and twenty-three people in the server as of today. Ping done. Right. Live. Alrighty then. I've had a concept for a Ford 10106 locomotive for a while, so I haven't built it. Also, don't know when to build it. There is such a thing as too much. I mean, ooh. like, have you tried to make a Lego mock of Gordon or Henry? Lol. Well, hello, Seth Bricks. Thank you very much for tuning in. Right, Gerald. What was the. Oh, that was my headphones. Sorry, ignore that. Earlier today, uh, oh, you mean a 416.6? Well, even that's too much. So earlier today, as in like five hours ago right now, I uploaded a video showcasing all of my Lego Thomas mocks. And it does include Henry and Gordon. They are two of my older uh, Thomas character models coming up to nearly two years old. Uh, they do show the rage, it must be said, but I have built them. And yeah, they definitely do need an upgrade. So, yeah, I mean, everything is there now. So, again, if you haven't seen that video, I strongly recommend you go and do so because it is a wonderful video. It was really, well, it wasn't tedious to put together. I remember doing something similar. Hello, Josh. Thank you very much for tuning in. How you doing? One last live stream before I go dark for a bit. But anyways, that video that I uploaded earlier today, let me have a check to see how long the video actually is. It's 14 minutes long. And it's just hit 100 views. Hello. Um, sorry, I'm going to be doing this a few times during the live stream. I'll explain that in a second. I'm good. Doing all right. Getting ready for tomorrow onwards. Uh, what I'll do, in fact, I will post this in the chat. There we go. So that's the video link there. So that got uploaded earlier today. It's 36 Thomas and Friends models, five rolling stock pieces, and about 29 characters. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> well, locomotives, I should say. There are a few rolling stock characters, technically. And yeah, I mean, it's really quite the something. Because putting it together wasn't quite as tedious as I thought it would be. Like, one, it took one day to, well, kind of on and off during the day. But um, I spent one day setting it up and making all the on screen graphics and downloading the uh, music pieces that I use for the video. Day two was recording, and I think I was able to do editing on the same day. I can't remember. This was earlier in the week. And, yeah, I basically got it uploaded, ready for premiere, because, you know, a premiere is always fun. And, yeah, there it is. It's a good video. 14 minutes of just seeing everything I've built, 
for my Lego Thomas and Friends collection. It's such it, again, it's such a good and really fun video. So if you're going to ask me, have I made this character? Just watch that video. I probably have. But with that said, the first thing to talk about is with that video. I also said in that video and the uh, YouTube shorts that I posted yesterday, that's Mexican Rail Fan. Oh, you changed your username. Interesting. Hello. How are you doing? Thank you very much for tuning in. What's happening? Uh, we are talking about the video I uploaded earlier today. So I have now made all of the Lego Thomas characters that I want to make. I'm not making any more. I'm not going to be making any more characters because there are other things I want to prioritize and get on with. And the sad thing is, I don't really want to make any more characters. Again, Hank, you can list so many characters. Hank, Cranky, Timothy was interesting. Molly, I've got the wheels set up ready for technically. Diesel 10 was on the list, but I got to a point where I thought, you know what? With everything I've built now, this will do. I don't really want to make any more. So everything I've now got uh, for the Lego Thomas and Friends collection is in two boxes over there, along with the rest of the layout. So yeah, that's quite the something. I mean, that literally is closing a chapter where my model of Thomas, the one I've got now basically was made. Uh, it was nearly four years ago and I've still got the same model. Modified the running board to go to seven subs wide, but that same model is still there. A year after I made Thomas, I made Gordon. A month after Gordon, I made James, Henry, and Edward. And since then, characters have been coming in batches. And of course, throughout the beginning of February up to now, I have been posting all of the last batch of models that I've been making in January. So, uh, mm, I think that's me pretty much done. Man, I need more wheels and couplers for more mods. Yeah, I mean, couplers is the more tedious thing because it's it's weird in a sense because people who have couplers, like when they buy train sets and they want to make their own custom models, you can have loads of wheels anyways, and you can sometimes get spare wheels, but you'll never have enough couplers. So, hmm. I, I definitely understand the struggle there, needing more couplers. And speaking of Thomas characters... Let's talk about what's been going on these past few days. So, to anybody who hasn't paid attention to my YouTube community tab, first of all, I strongly recommend you go and do so after this live stream. But you can even, um, depending on what devices you have at the time, um, at the time, you should still be able to you know, shorten the video, go to my channel, and go to the community tab. Let's have a go uh, there now. A bunch of polls to see of all of the Thomas and Friends models that I have made, which one is the most popular. And this has been a really, really fascinating thing to do. Some of the matchups are a bit biased, and some of the matchups are really close. I'm going to start from the very beginning. I'm going to go through all of these. And I think it was a good idea to do multiple rounds per day, because otherwise it would just be a bit slow and boring. And there's another reason as well, but you get the idea. So the very first one to determine these brackets was my Thomas versus LBSC Thomas. For this, I excluded all rolling... Uh, actually, no, that's not true. So, uh, specifically, I included characters. So the Express Coach isn't part of it. Devious Diesel is not part of it because that was built with instructions. My E2 Thomas was also a model built with instructions. And my models of Toby and Henrietta were built by someone else. They are not my creations. So they did not take part in this poll showdown. So the first poll was Thomas versus Green Thomas, the LBSC Adventure Begins 2015 Thomas. Green Thomas won with 60% of the votes. Next was James versus Busy B James. James, normal red James, won with 77% of the votes. And at this point, I realized, oh yeah, YouTube does picture polls now which is excellent and it was at this point where for the next few polls i did the reminder of this isn't a generic popularity contest for the character this is a which of these mocks is better you know what is the best built character <laughs> so this is where the this was the best like these first round matches were the best ones for it because i can get some really interesting and creative showdowns 
So Donald and Douglas versus Bill and Ben. Get the two twins against each other, you know. Donald and Douglas won that one with 73% of the vote. Uh, let's uh, tell you what, I'll add how many voters as well. So, so for the first one, Thomas versus Green Thomas, there were 48 votes. James versus Busy B. James, there were 43 votes. But once the pictures came in, it had loads more. So 78 voters in total. 73% of them went to Donald and Douglas. Next was Duck versus Oliver, and this was quite one-sided. 98 votes, and Duck won with 88% of the votes. The biggest gap in all of the polls. Duck with 88%, and Oliver with 12%. That's insane. Next was Salty versus Mavis, with 93 votes. Salty won with 60%. Up next, with 102 votes, was Spencer versus Gordon. A very spicy matchup. And Spencer won with 67% of the votes. Next was Hero versus Henry. Another interesting dynamic we've seen on screen. But for this one with 85 votes, Hero won with 76% of the votes. Another interesting one, and one that surprised me. So Fergus versus Neil, 77 votes, and Neil won with 65%. I really thought Fergus was better, but the people have spoken. Up next, two purple engines, again, trying to be a little bit thematic, with 99 votes. Ryan won, beating Lady with 77% of the votes. Up next, with 105 votes, Emily versus Edward. And I thought this would be a bit closer, but turns out not really. Emily won with 70% of the votes. My model of Edward still really does hold up. I really do like my model of Edward still. But Emily, oh, that, that Sterling single model came out so well. This next one, I think, got the most amount of votes overall. And this was one of those odd pairings. Scar Lowy versus Daisy. With 119 votes in the poll, Scar Lowy won with 85%. Uh, second place with the biggest gap, where earlier Duck won with 88%. The kind of main strongest voted poll. Up next was two red and yellow boys, Arthur and Harvey. They went up against each other with 105 votes overall. Arthur won with 74%. Next was quite split, like really close for a good while. It was Percy versus Stanley with 97 votes. Percy won with 60% of the votes. And the two wrongly stopped characters that were eligible, Toad versus Annie and Clarabelle. 85 voters took place, and Toad won with 80% of the polls. So those were all of the first round matches. So once again, the winners um, of the first round matches, Green LBSC Thomas, James, Donald and Douglas, Duck, Salty, Spencer, Hero, Neil, Ryan, Emily, Skarloey, Arthur, Percy and Toad. Very fun stuff indeed. So now we have much less polls to go through. Entering these second round matches, there were seven of these. Percy versus LBSC Green Thomas, two green tank engines. Percy won, 89 voters took place, uh, 89 votes took place with Percy winning 65%. Next was Emily versus James, 98 votes in total with Emily taking 73% victory. Another fairly close one, two very sophisticated, gorgeous looking black locomotives, Dodon Douglas versus Hero. And I was really split on this. I did not know which way this would go. 100 vo uh, 105 votes were cast. Donald and Douglas won with a 60% victory. Another great Western thematic poll here. So we have Duck versus Toad. 94 votes and Duck won with 77% of the vote. Up next, some season six and seven characters. Arthur versus Salty. Another one that I thought would be quite close, but turns out not really. 110 votes. Arthur storming ahead with an 83% victory. Another mismatch one, but the one that kind of, you know, it just happened. It was Spencer versus Ryan. And again, a bit of a one-sided one, maybe. But still, after 92 votes, Spencer won with 70... Oh, God damn it. Sorry. So, yeah, Spencer won with 78% of the votes. Sorry, don't mind me. I'm, re I'm really bad with ulcers. 
which are spots inside your mouth. And my teeth just clipped one, so we're gonna have to get some Bonjela on that later. Yeah, you don't want to do too much talking when you've got those spots. Anyways, up next was Scarloe versus Neil, two small tank engines. And one that fit really well because in the books, Neil greeted Scarloe. So it was really cool. 76 votes were cast and Scarloe won with 79% victory. So those were all of the second round matches. So there were seven of them and the winners were Percy, Emily, Donald and Douglas, Duck, Arthur, Spencer, and Scar Lowy. Now then, over the course of today, the third round matches have gone out. And let me quickly refresh because this is very interesting. Because the first one was Duck versus Percy. And I think I'm going to have to find out who the true winner is tomorrow. So, Duck versus Percy... At the moment, again, the conclusion cannot really be taken yet. So far, at 55 votes, Duck is winning, which is very interesting. It was Percy for a while earlier today, but Duck took the lead, which is very exciting. Next is one of two, three contender polls. The, the, very, like the grand final, after these three polls are done, the grand final will have three competitors. But this is the only non-grand final match that has three options. And this was another beautiful thematic one. Another season six and seven character showdown. Emily, Spencer and Arthur. So far there are 60 votes and Emily is in the lead. Remember, these are still actively going. The final showdown will not happen until I think tomorrow night will be the best thing for it. And the last poll for this third round match is Donald and Douglas versus Scar Lowy, with Donald and Douglas so far in the lead after 54 votes. So remember folks, these polls are still going. The last three polls, these third round matches are the ones where you need to get your votes in, because the grand final, the ultimate showdown, if you want to call it that, pardon me, will take place tomorrow night. There's the other one. And so, uh, sorry, there was three of them there. Sam Brown. Hello. Thank you very much for tuning in. I finally got my L1 running again. Ooh, very good. Hmm, I want to do that now. Sorry, I'm just feeling up the spot. Tell you what. Actually, no, I won't do that now. Okay, so that was the first major thing. Well, technically the second. The first one was the video. Second one, all of those polls. That has been really exciting to do. I am going to be doing another thing like this in the future with my giants. So keep an eye out for that. But I've got like a third of the amount of giants that I do for, um, compared to Thomas characters. So yeah, that'll be pretty interesting. The final showdown is going to be very, very interesting. And I think I know who's going to win. And I'm going to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, let us move on to our next order of business. So we had a couple of people come and go, which is okay, but it would have been good for them to stick around because this is big, big news. Okay, so. Why did you build uh, Scarloe's standard gauge? He's narrow gauge. Scarloe is built, or my model of Scarloe is built to run on narrow gauge track. In the showcase video that I posted earlier today, if you had a keen eye, you will notice on the front showcase rail, there were blue track pieces to have a two stud gap between the rails. But the problem with that, I understand why you say that, because my Scarlet model is quite chunky, but that's because he's got, again, he's only got two studs between the wheels, but I've built the main body six studs wide. I kind of scaled it that way. I've seen people make a five wide scar lobby with tiny wheels, but I hate that. Maybe it works, sure, but it feels just too small, and I personally don't like it. I also wanted my model of scar lobby to have functioning drive rods, so that's kind of you know a factor in play with um, as to why. Well, yeah, it it does seem confusing, yeah. But the fact that I'm using medium sized drive wheels to have a functional drive rod system on there again the base model but the fact it does have drive rods to begin with 
that's what I really wanted. So that kind of determined the overall size as well. But yeah. Mm. Okay, then. Main order of business? Yes, let's get on with that, shall we? So, you may have noticed the title of this live stream says last one for now. And that is because some major developments have been going on in my personal life. I'll tell you what. Let me go to my Discord server. Can I read that? No. I mean, I could read it out. Did I post it on my community tab? That would really help if I did, because that way, because I mean, I've got the light setting for YouTube. So YouTube, Discord, YouTube, Discord. I think you would prefer to see me, you know? Uh, did I, did I, did I, did I, did I? Yes, I did. Okay. Let me get rid of, get rid of uh, well, not get rid of it, keep it there for now. So I'm going to read the updates that went out nine days ago. And it basically says everything I'm going to say now. So if you haven't seen this, again, it was over a week ago, so I don't really blame you. But um, again, this is genuinely insane for me. I think I've got reactions as well. So it reads as follows. So this update is a very important and quite unique, unique for the situation. So tomorrow, Monday 13th, I'm going to be entering a new stage of my working life, and that will lead to a much slower schedule for YouTube. This new stage begins, well, as it, as it writes here, a little over a week, but tomorrow for me here and now, it will be commencing. I do not know how this will really affect my free time for YouTube and other hobby stuff. If push comes to shove, I may have to close off other areas of my channel's reach. There's so much for me to prepare for, and I have been using this week to get myself physically ready for this. But I don't know how things on my YouTube channel or even with my hobby time will be affected until this new working time commences and is figured out. So things like future episodes of the Brick Railway Builders podcast, more Lego train mods, working on my layouts, getting more videos done for YouTube, and so much more will be on hold for much longer than what I have previously been used to. All the same, this is something I've wanted for so long, and I am ready for this new chapter in my life. This is more of a be ready sort of post in case I disappear from the internet for a good long while. So thank you to everyone who has tuned in for my channel and has enjoyed all of the content I've made over the years. It has been so incredible to see people take interest and inspiration from my creations ever onward. So that is what the update says. As long as the Lego stuff says, I'm happy. The Lego stuff will still be on the channel. Nothing is going to be taken down from the channel anymore. So there is ooh, some explaining to do there. So first of all, let me get a drink. The diesel fuel. It's not burp juice anymore. It's diesel fuel. Mm-hmm. So this update is quite big again, as I've been going on about. Hello RK, good to see you. Thank you very much for tuning in. You're just in time for a life update. So essentially what this post translates to is since finishing education at the age of 18. Uh, yeah, had a bit of a lag issue there. Oh, for goodness sakes, we're in the middle of a soppy moment here, YouTube. Come on. <laughs> right, let's try that again. Okay. So this update is quite big because ever since finishing education at the age of 18, it took me four months to get a job. I don't know what the experience is like for anyone else. There are people who finish college, finish university, and then enter a job straight away. Not necessarily one that uses all of their qualifications. Maybe some of them do. But they, there are people that go straight from school into working life. There's like no gap. There are students that were in my year as well who 
had a part-time job whilst they were still in college. So that was really, well, I suppose looking back, I think that was quite cool. But the amount of stress, I suppose, it was must have been insane. So for me, it took four months. And with all of the creativity and qualifications that I had when I finished college, in that four-month span, I was not able to apply, well, successfully apply for any job using those qualifications. And that has been a real shame. In time, I got a job elsewhere, simply put, retail, you know, it is what it is. And that has been a very interesting job because the hours I work are part time. And that was the case from starting working life to now. So a few hours in the day for a few days in the week, I'd be working. And it's weird because when you work part time, you get to do all the luxury stuff that I've done. I've done videos on YouTube. I've built everything I have with Lego. I've had freedoms to go to Lego shows and meetups and whatever else because I know I'm not going to be needed during the day. I'm still employed, but, you know, that's going to be later on today. So it's quite, quite fascinating. But in the past few weeks, after months of going through job searching again, I'm now once again, and well, not once again, because that's not correct. I am now finally entering full-time work. So it's fascinating to me because this is what I've wanted for so long, to work full-time, because that means I get a lot more money, I can get myself more prepared for the future, and that's more money I can dedicate to the hobby, or hobbies, because, you know, Nerf Blasters and Lego Trains and you know, God forbid I get back into making props and cosplay again, you know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's... it's Well, I'm not excited, but I'm not nervous either. If anything, for me, this is about time, you know? So... It's going to be really interesting to go through that, but most of my days now, like over the half of the week is going to be completely consumed by work, work shifts. Sunday is the only day in the week that I've absolutely got, like, I can absolutely guarantee that I don't have any work. But basically Monday to Saturday, I'm working. Sometimes just the mornings and the afternoon. Sometimes it might just be the evenings. But I've been aware and I have accepted well, a bit begrudgingly accepted that this does mean I've lost so much free time. And when you have an internet presence like I do, I've got a YouTube channel with over 4,100 subscribers, and that is such an incredible thing for me to say. But I want to make sure I can still provide something for all of those people who have decided to stick around and subscribe and watch my videos. I don't really want to do like one video a month God forbid it's just, you know, a YouTube short uh, after five weeks of absence just to say, look at this thing, you know. I do want to try and keep things going for YouTube, but the video I uploaded earlier today, my Thomas Model Grand Showcase thing, that was the last video idea I had lined up. And I purposefully waited it to go out today because this is the last day before I enter new working life. So I had to make sure it was ready for today. That way I've, I know it's up, it's cool, good, and we're ready to rock and roll. Hello, Tonks Trains. Thank you very much for tuning in. So yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I am now entering full-time work. Hobby stuff, including YouTube, is now going to be pretty much on the back burner. I am still going to be able to do Lego shows. There are some Lego shows coming up that I have signed up for. And, you know, an easy video from them is to do some vlogs. So yeah, that's definitely on the way. Uh, my next Lego show, in fact, is next weekend. So, you know, that's something. Uh, yeah, so it's... 
you know, there's just a lot going on. It's weird. Again, I keep saying it's weird and it's fascinating because it is. But it's, you know, this it's the sense of this is what, well, <laughs> RK, you're not wrong, but you're not technically right either. Basically, the long, so long story short is I'm not broke, but, um, well, my layout will say otherwise. I'm entering a new stage of my life that I've been wanting for years, but I've been begrudgingly accepting that it comes with a cost. That means I'm focusing time on work and not this. So, yeah. There have been, there, um, well, I have said this to a couple of people. I've never made this public like this outside of the um, post I made on YouTube and on Discord as well. So, yeah, I mean, there have been people that, you know, the people I've told this about have congratulated me for it because they understand as well that this has been a long time coming. I mean, the world today, I don't want to get political, but simply put, the world today is an absolute bastard place to go and try and do anything in. So waiting six years after finishing education to enter full-time work, yeah, be ready for it. You know, that's definitely a thing that could potentially happen to you. Speaking of comments, I saw RK say earlier, British people finished college at 18. So we have primary school, secondary school, college, and then university. So through so your main school years from like five years old, I think, up until 11, and then 11 to 16 are the, are the primary and secondary school years. So you finish secondary school at 16. You go to college for, normally it's two years. You can go there for a third year, depending on your courses. And you normally finish college at 18, maybe 19 again, depending on your courses. And then you go to university and throw away all of your money because university is just a pointless thing, in my opinion. But again, we're not getting political. <laughs> but um, yeah, there is no good education system, but that's just how it is, at least over here. So yes, it's quite the something. Congratulations, Luke. Thank you very much, Tonks. And also one question, how many tank engines do you have planned on the Tritonago Railway? Engines I plan to build, I think technically one still because Duck is a Great Western 5700 Pannier and having held that model again recently, I really do want to make another one that is eight studs wide in red and yellow, you know, Triton Lego Railway livery. So that I would like to try and do one day, but that, that's been on the list for like a month now. So clearly I don't really care that much to get on with it. I do have Smokey Joe, which is a cool little engine as well, but I don't plan to build it. It would be good to have some tank engines, it really would, and that's the whole point of having the Panio, but um, that's the only other one I've got really got planned. So Lego Boko will be here in another seven years. I think it's worth the wait. Well, maybe. If I can buy a warehouse instead of a home, just have one corner dedicated to like a mattress, little skillet to cook food with, a bucket or something. No, no, I'm not going there. But basically, if I can make, or not so much make, but get a big enough space, because starting tomorrow, I'm going to be on a much quicker path to acquiring my own home. If I can get my own home and then have a good chunk of space dedicated to layouts, that's more space for building engines. So, yeah, I mean definitely more likely with a bigger space to build more engines like Boko. And yes, Boko is a Kobo. Every time Boko gets mentioned in a certain... Oh, am, I... am I wearing the shirt today? Yes, I am. So in a certain group chat for a certain club, whenever Boko gets mentioned, there's a particular someone who immediately points out, actually, he's a Kobo. Like, no, for goodness sakes, man. I was thinking you could put a Terry on the TLR layout. I have been thinking about making the Terry. You know, every now and then a Terry does come up. It's like, it's not impossible to make. But um, I don't know. It's not something I really care. Like, building Stepney is one thing. I'm having to buy the, um, again, 
the correct colored parts to build Stephanie. That's one thing. But it's another engine where it would be cool to make, but I don't really want to. Not my sort of thing. They have those here in the US, and they pretty much have uh, pretty much just old warehouses with a toilet and sink. I mean, if I have facilities and I have a good chunk of space, I could keep my layouts out permanently. I mean, in the UK, we're not really subject to um, natural disasters, especially when it comes to weather stuff. So it would be safe, I suppose, from the weather. We didn't do much with tank engines here in the US. We did have our OATO switching tender engines in some Yes, switching tender engines or shunter tender engines. That's just weird because they're tender engines. Get a tank. Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> and yes, Bluebell Railway with all the Terriers. I think they've got three. At least they had two. Well, they did have two working ones. But after one of them had a... What was it? Um, one of the drive rod pieces? I, don't know, I remember there being... It was in Unlucky Tug's um, vlog when he went to the Audrey extravaganza. He then went to the Blueberry Railway and one of the Terriers had a broken piece. And I remember that being shared in the group chat as well. Have you ever thought of giving your Thomas and Friends characters brick built faces? If so, how will they look in your opinion? There is a... You know what? There is a... Um, what's his name? Cool Ridge... Productions, that's his name. So there is a YouTube channel called Cool Ridge Productions. He makes Star Wars stuff out of Lego, and he also makes Thomas characters out of Lego. And his Lego Thomas characters have brick-built spaces. And they're not bad, given how the character models are built. But they are quite chunky, you know? You can definitely tell the proportions really don't belong. But that doesn't take away from the fact that he's accomplished some good-looking brick-built faces. So if I uh, tell you what, let's go to one of the older ones. Actually, that's not a bad idea for... Um... How did I see it? There it is. So I will leave a link to one of his videos in the chat here and now. So that's his model of duck. Have a look at how he's built the face and how he built the model as well, because it's a good design. But yeah, brick built faces. I mean, that I didn't go for brick built faces because of how they look. That's why I went for looking for toys. So yeah, there is that. And yeah, I think it was a coupling rod, something like that. Maybe like more of an internal piece, I think, but yeah. Here in, the, uh, here in the U.S., where where we we were switching out trains that were over a mile long in many cases, and tank engines just don't have enough grunts. That's true, but then again, that's U.S. with mile long trains. I used to use four by four, one stud tool, light gray circle plates. Oh uh, yeah, just anything like a round four by four. I just use a traditional snowbox front now. I think that would be better as well because the realistic look is just nicer. Mm. Okay then. Something else I can talk about is my second channel. Okay. So I wonder how many people actually remember this. What did I make the post? What did I make the first post? going past all of the poles. Uh, there we go. So, two weeks ago, well, two weeks ago tomorrow, technically, but yeah, I decided to go ahead and make a second channel. So, on my main channel, I have about 470 videos set to private. Half of them are old, cringy LEGO train videos that do not make the standard for nowadays. And the other half are things that are not LEGO train related. So things like some props, cosplay stuff, some other weird projects, some weird one-off videos showcasing collections of things. Just stuff that didn't fit the channel. Oh, for goodness sakes. Just looking back how the channel is being presented today. So I've selected a couple of dozen videos that I do still like. 
And the reason why I'm making this second channel, and why I have made the second channel, and you should all subscribe to, is because I do want these videos to be public, but I don't like how there's a whole series of Lego Train and Nerf Blaster videos, and then you've got a miscellaneous prop video, a miscellaneous card game video. So stuff that doesn't fit in. My main channel has been all about Lego Trains, and Nerf Blasters has been going for three and a half years. So at this point, it's strong enough to remember that. Sam, I just saw that you retracted your message. What was it you said? Oh, bugger. Uh, I will get to chats in just a moment. Uh, yeah, so the new channel is still going strong. The videos, amazingly, <laughs> despite the fact that I set the original videos to private, on my second, again, these are all my videos. So I set them to private, downloaded them, again, about 40 or so out of 470. So I'm not being a shill. I'm just selecting the better videos to post online. And, um, well, online on my second channel, I should say. And they are now on there, and they've been picked up by the copyright, which I think is quite interesting in a way i mean I find, you know it still measures the fact that it's something that's been set to private but um it's nothing to worry about because again it's all of my videos so earlier today i rounded off the prop and cosplay stuff amazingly so there were four prop and cosplay videos i chose to re-upload the sam wilson shield which is well, technically over there you can't see it there was a two-parter on how i made it and the showcase itself the Captain Britain shield in its simpler form, and the Captain Britain cosplay showcase. I was tempted to, and I am kind of still tempted to re-upload the Captain Britain series, but I don't know. I remember watching a few videos and going, mm, I probably shouldn't do that. I think it was the first four episodes, because there was the first four, then the simple version, then I made the second half of the series, and it got better. So I might have to double check that. But yeah. On my second channel. Which you can click the link to in the chats there. And it is in the description of this live stream. I am going through. Well we will be going through slowly but surely. All of my other videos and live streams. To update the descriptions. With my second channel. There is some you know. Some of the stuff I've been posting on here is actually some good videos. Uh, my Fallout Britannia series as well. That was really fun to revisit. The Exploding Kittens card game videos. They are pretty good. Already the power ranking video is on 40 views. Which for a channel that has 55 subscribers ain't bad I suppose. The original one got thousands. But it doesn't belong on the main channel. And again that's... So there's Prop and Cosplay stuff, the Exploding Kitten stuff, Fallout Britannia, and the next series of videos will be the Doctor Who Sonic Screwdriver toy reviews. And a first for the channel will be a video I actually made for the second channel, which is quite the something. Okay. I'm going to bash through these comments and then I'm going to head off, okay? I want to end this one a little bit early because there's not much else to really talk about. And the whole point of this was to get that main update kind of out of the way. Okay. Uh, so do you have plans to make a Lego railway in your new house? When I move out and get my own home, I absolutely want to set up a new layout and something more permanent as well. And I want a house, not, well, I don't mind having a house, like an apartment compared to a house. I just want to make sure that it's got good space. Uh, did you hear SM64 is going and save a small castle room while wallowing in his own filth making a YouTube thing? Okay. Did you know that LEGO made an official Ghost Train set? Yes, the Monster Fighters Ghost Train from 2010. I bought one of them, and I made a custom Ghost Train using that set. Pretty good. I wanted to expand my LEGO train layout stuff with a turntable, sheds and crossings and water towers and all that plus locomotives. Yep, you're going to have an endless list. It's going to take you a long while to go through all of that. Will you make stop motion animations when you get your own place? Not so much stop motion, 
but the Triton Lego Railway official YouTube series is still on my mind, and I would love to try and figure that out one day. Have you seen a game called Rolling Line that's on Steam? I saw Train of Thoughts stream it. It's not actually part of the stream, but it does look interesting. If this is it, the wooden, the like toy wooden train one. That one looks interesting. What class does the players train from Juju Tiles remind you of? Nothing. There is no real world basis. So the Juju Charles tank engines don't make sense because it has a funnel and emits steam and smoke. But there's nowhere for you to, you know, shovel the coal. So it's a diesel. Why is there a funnel? Doesn't matter. Have you played Railroads Online? No. I'm quite fed up with video games. I tried to play some video games this morning. I went through like six games. Lag and other stuff happened. It just ruined it. If you want, I can write script for the Trison Lego Railway episodes. Appreciate the offer, but no thank you. It's all going to be homegrown, and I've got a dedicated Word document filled with ideas. There is so much I want to go through, and it's ever-expanding. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid I'm going to end the stream here, which is earlier than usual, but there are things I need to prepare for. My nights are getting much shorter. I'm going to bed hours earlier than I used to, and I need to end the stream now to kind of help prepare for that because I'm now having very early mornings compared to late mornings. So yeah, I yeah, this is um, quite the mess. So going forward for YouTube, I really don't know what's going to happen. It could be months until I upload again. I'll continue to do polls and community posts just to keep in touch. The Discord server will stay open. But in terms of videos, I don't know when the next video is going to come out so do stay subscribed and do stay tuned for when that does eventually happen a new video could come in like three days who knows but um yeah i mean it's we're gonna have to wait for tomorrow to decide how things go because tomorrow is going to set the tone basically for my future going forward so thank you everyone so much for tuning in thank you to everyone who has been subscribed for as long as i um for as long as you have i don't blame people if they wish to Kind of take their leave at this point because I've been disappearing for weeks at a time. However, do subscribe to my second channel because that is a lot of fun. So thanks again, everyone, and I shall see you all in the future. Bye, guys.